Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Um, as as, as uh, Christine mentioned, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I work at Mark O'Connell. Mark O'Connell is a pretty full-service firm. There are 55 of us. I do nothing but the elder law work there. Uh, I've been doing elder law for a long time, but, but really, really seriously since my mother died in a nursing home back in 1991, and I saw that all play out, and that wasn't, she had what was, you know, what then was something, and now is Alzheimer's, you know, and so I got very interested in these issues. Um, but we've been following this case, as a, as a matter of fact, because Brenda first pointed it out to me. Brenda pointed it out to me when this case was pending a couple of years ago and said, you know, we really should be watching this. I think it's a pretty serious issue. Um, and so I'm just, I want to give you a sense of what the case is about. Um, first of all, th this, these are my standard clients, my friends Frank and Mary, right, and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Um, they, they, their goal in life is to die and be buried in the backyard and then eventually leave everything they have to their kids. That's their kind of goal and they have not a whole lot of money. I just wanted to give you kind of a sense of the people that I, uh, th this, this is more than anything is pretty much my standard client. They've got a house. Mortgage is paid, they got reasonable income, they're okay unless they suffer some kind of major medical emergency. Um, so I talk a lot about these folks in the, in the mass health context in terms of nursing home care because we all know that's one of the issues with Medicare. It's the great defect in Medicare, right, that it covers any serious injury or any serious illness. If you need skilled care, if you need chemo, if you need operations, right, Medicare covers it. If you need help, you know, finding your way around the house or putting on your shirt. You, Medicaid do, Medicare doesn't, and that's, those are the people who get wiped out. Uh, and so Mary's issue is that she just never, ever, ever wants to go to a nursing home. Um, but her question is, what happens uh, if she falls down and goes to the hospital uh, and really needs some rehab care or some care at the nursing home? Or what, what if she's in the nursing home and falls down and then goes to the hospital? Well, the general rule we have known has always been uh, in order to qualify for Medicare as opposed to Medicaid or Mass Health, you need to have spend three days in the hospital admitted. Uh, we all know that there's a big issue around that question right now because increasingly Medicare had been taking the position over the last few years that you can be in one of those hospital beds and that in the hospital and sort of look, felt like you were admitted and you were in the, the admitted ward. Um, but it may turn out that you really weren't admitted because Medicare was taking the position that unless you needed a certain level of care in the hospital, you weren't admitted. That's a separate issue though. But if you can, spend, if you can show that you've spent three days at the hospital and then get to um, a, a um, skilled nursing facility, then Medicare will cover up to 100 days in that skilled nursing facility as long everybody knew as you were getting better. As long as you were getting better, I would always tell my clients, Medicare covers the cost of getting better, not the cost of staying the same. Um, then came Jimmo versus Sebelius, um, which was a challenge to that premise. Um, and, and there had been two previous cases, two prior cases to Jimmo, uh, federal district court cases. And in both of those cases, the plaintiffs had said, no, actually, Medicare doesn't say that you are entitled to the skilled services either at home, uh, if you're homebound, or in a skilled nursing facility if you can show you need skilled services most of the time. You're entitled to those services whether you're getting better or not. In both of those district court cases, the plaintiffs won. CMS law, CMS Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services lost, uh, didn't appeal, but said that they were not accepting the decision, right? They were just not accepting it. So the, the folks from, among other things, the Alzheimer's Association, the National MS, MS Society, and various others teamed up with uh, a, a, legal, a nonprofit legal group called the Center for Medicare Advocacy, which is located actually in Connecticut, although they have offices in DC also, um, and Vermont Legal Services, and brought a case on behalf of Ms. Jimmo against um, 
um, uh, Gene Sebelius, the Secretary of Human, Health and Human Services, saying uh, as, a, as a national matter, and they, so they did this as a national class action suit, as a national matter, we're challenging this standard. Uh, and what happened was they, they uh, so they filed, and CMS filed a motion for, to dismiss the case saying, oh no, well that's not the standard. We, it, we never said that improvement was the standard because it's nowhere in our regulations that improvement is the standard. Um, but then in response, these folks, you know, demonstrated with a ton of documentation that while it wasn't written down any place, that all of the MACs, all of the agencies that were spending the money or doing the reimbursements on behalf of Medicare were taking that position and had been for just forever. Uh, and so the judge uh, um, 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 refused to dismiss the case. At that point, CMS decided it was time to talk about settling, which they did. Uh, back in uh, January of 2013, actually, was when the settlement was finally uh, done and approved by the federal court. And according to the terms of that settlement, it was supposed to be implemented uh, one year later in January of 2014. So we are right now well into this implement implementation um, phase. Uh, but guess what? You know, it really hasn't been implemented a whole lot. But, but let's talk about what the decision, what the agreement says. That coverage does not turn on the presence or absence of potential for improvement, but rather on the need for skilled care. So if you're in a, if you're at home um, because you're homebound, or if you're in a nursing home because you spent those three days in the hospital and you're in the, the nursing home recovering, or even after those hundred days, by the way, if you're on Medicare B because you need some other services. So, th so that they're saying um, whether you're homebound at home or whether you're in the skilled nursing facility because you need regular skilled services, that, um, skilled, that, that the services um, are covered by Medicare if they're, they need to be skilled and if they're needed to maintain, prevent, or slow deterioration, right? That's the whole premise. So, uh, is skilled professional care needed to ensure um, nursing or therapy is safe and effective, as opposed to can this be done by somebody who is in the household, right, if you're at home? Or can it be done by less skilled people and therefore you don't need to be in a nursing home, right? Um, or is a skilled therapist needed in order to supervise that care? or in order to design that care, and in order to test for it. So that there is this, that, that's kind of where this case is going. Um, now, what Jimmo didn't do is it didn't change any of the other current standards, right? So you're still limited, as far as Medicare A is concerned, to 100 days in a skilled nursing facility. But in terms of, for, for, so for a whole lot of my clients who are in the skilled nursing facility already, right? A lot of them on Medicaid, or in mass health, and none of them getting any kind of skill services. They're just kind of there being fed and wheeled out into the hallway, you know, every once in a while. Um, the notion that they may be entitled to these kinds of services while they're in the nursing home, especially if they've gone to the hospital and are now coming back from the hospital, so they had an incident in the hospital. The notion that they could be entitled to more services is just a big deal for me. Or if they, have, if they are at home, um, those rules have not changed, right? As, as you all know, because you folks are all in the business, most, you know, most citizens, most elders don't know that they can get services at home even if they haven't been to the hospital they can, in 60-day in increments. And this is really big as far as you know, my clients are concerned, as far as a lot of the Alzheimer's population is concerned, because this can go forever. So if we can demonstrate that there is a package of skilled services that are needed at home, and once again, that's nursing, physical therapist, occupational therapist, and the doctor will certify those services are needed, then those services can continue in 60 day increments forever, thus allowing a lot of my clients to be able to stay at home. So, but in order to do that, of course, they need to be homebound, that's the magic social, the, the magic Medicare word, they need to require those skilled services, but, when, but it's renewable forever. Now, in response to Jimmo, um, Medicare or CMS had agreed, as I had mentioned, that they would change their rules, which they did. They did a ton of modifications to the, 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 med, the so-called Medicare policy manual. Any of you ever read the Medicare policy manual? It's 1,300 pages of great reading, right? I haven't read it, but I've gone to but you've, it you, you, you've, you've, you've seen the, how big it is. So that is actually, they actually went all the way through, and they did the, they did the three kind of relevant sections, you know, they did the Medicare, the, the Medicare B section and then the, 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 the SNF section and the homebound section. 
And they added at various places this language that said that you, know, you, need to be, you only need to be showing that you, the care is needed right, in order to maintain or keep slow the deterioration. You could almost see though the CMS people saying in their heads, but you know this is going to cost us a lot of money and therefore we got to try to save some somehow. So what they did across all um, their regulations, whether this is a GMO case or not, is they said, is they increase the documentation requirements that, that are required before Medicare will agree to pay for the care. Um, they're saying documentation has to occur at every visit, that when the documentation occurs, and this is the vi visits to home in the homebound case, or the, every time one of the skilled folks does something with the patient in the skilled nursing facility. They don't want any generalities. They e in each case, they want the person who was doing the work to, to explain why it is that the work was needed in the first place, what was done, and why it is that additional skilled services con will continue to be needed the next time. Every time a person uh, interacts with that patient.